Good evening, everyone. We're going to get started. If we could grab some seats, and uh, I really don't want to be that formal with the microphone, but we're recording uh, tonight, so and that's the only way we're going to be able to pick everybody up. So if you got questions, I'll probably come over to you with the microphone and uh, let you answer your questions. So we're here tonight to talk about uh, a, a proposal to uh, make more Cormac Woods a golf cart zone. There were some small maps and uh, we brought a, a larger picture of it. And uh, I'll kind of try to give a little bit of background on and how we got here this evening. And it was really, we got a proposal from the golf course to, uh, to consider this. There's about a half a dozen cities in our state that have uh, that have uh, done this. Um, it's, there is a state law that, that covers it. Um, some of the proponents uh, proponents of it have spoke to creating a sense of community that's unique uh, from other places and you know other communities. We've got a golf course community out here, and providing an additional means of transportation to get around. We've got uh, quite a bit of development going on out here, and. Uh, We've got a community center and a, and a proposed coffee shop that goes with that. Um, and down the road, there's a commercial component that actually happens and whether or not uh, that would be accessible for, through the golf carts or not would, is yet to be determined. Um, the proposal that, that uh, in, in its draft form there, it's, it can only be done in areas that the speed limit is 25 miles an hour and less, which would keep us on this side of Old Clifton Road. You couldn't go out into Old Clifton Road. Um, the, uh, there'll be signs posted clearly that, you know, where it starts and ends, and then it would be ending at the back entrance to the Park Woods, uh, back here and starting up here. Um, you would be required to be a licensed driver. Uh, the we're, we've got a sunrise and sunset clause where so because they're not going to require lights on these uh, golf carts so half hour uh, after sunrise and a half hour before sunset is when it, you could operate it um, you you wouldn't be able to operate them in the designated bike lanes pedestrian path or trails or parks we would require reflectors uh, seat belts rearview mirror are all required by state law uh, you got to have insurance and proof, carry proof of insurance and that's kind of a, in a nutshell capturing it here, here tonight we've got uh, some council members uh, with me I've got John Clausen, Beck Ashby, Cindy Lucarelli, Clancy Donlan and Fred Chang over here to my left and to my right uh, we've got the city clerk uh, Brandy Reinerson and the police chief uh, Chief Marti is here with us so with that I, I guess one of the concerns I've heard all out there is public safety and uh, so that's why I brought the police chief and I think at this point I'll hand him the microphone to talk about that a little bit and then I'll open it up for questions to you and really this was proposed to us we want um, my, I, my thought and the council's thought was this impacts this community out here and we thought we should bring a town hall meeting out here and and get your feelings and thoughts on it so with that here's the chief Hi, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd say I'm not a proponent or an opponent of this ordinance. Um, I just deal with what the city decides to do and give my best advice to the mayor or anybody else that might have questions about how we would do enforcement, potential problems we might see, um, things like that. But I would say that, you know, any place in Port Orchard, this is the place that seems logical to have a golf cart zone. I'm familiar with uh, communities that have this. It's a lot of them around Phoenix and Las Vegas area. And they seem to work pretty well and really don't have any problems. Normally the people that are involved are fairly responsible. And I would imagine that everybody here is probably the same. Um, as far as enforcement goes, um, the the way that I would see law enforcement being involved is mainly on complaint. Um, if you had somebody that was doing something inappropriate, it would be pretty easy to identify them. Uh, it's not something that we'd have to have a lot of patrols out looking for, you know, uh, people that were intoxicated while operating the golf carts or things like that. But we would do some spot enforcement here and there. 
Um, but like I said, mostly it would be from on complaint, and I can't imagine, in in my view, that we'd really have much of a problem uh, with enforcement if this ordinance went through. And so I gave that advice to the mayor and told him that I looked at the state statute in regards to golf carts and and they've actually covered most of the things that you think that they should have and um, if i was in a community like this i think i'd enjoy that um, i think that that it would be beneficial for some of the people that live here and i really don't think it would be um, too much of an imposition on anybody else um, but that's just my opinion so i'm open for any questions if you may have them so I guess before we start firing questions here, uh, maybe okay. any of the council members have any thoughts you want to share and then we'll open up the floor or should we just go right to the floor? All right. <coughs> this gentleman here raised his hand first. So you just give your name and then uh, ask a question. My name is Mike Schutz and my concern is <coughs> the, we have these wide uh, strips and I just went over to the post office to register a complaint with the supervisor there with a Post delivery, she had to be a uh, substitute driving 25 miles an hour. Just a little closer. Driving 25 miles an hour on that, and I don't want to see golf carts doing that speed. In fact, I'd rather not have them on that because now it's primarily walking and strolling area. I think the intent is to allow them to drive just like cars on the street. So I, th I think what we're looking at here is. I think what we're looking at here is that uh, the golf carts would operate in the lane of traffic unless there was a vehicle approaching from behind or they saw some sort of potential danger and then they could pull off onto the shoulder just enough to allow the car to safely pass and that's not problematic and uh, that's the way I see that. And and if somebody was primarily driving in the, in the shoulder area and we would address that. Like I said, these type of complaints would be easily handled. You know, all you have to do is identify who the people are, and you don't have to identify yourself. And we come out and we have a talk with them. So um, that's how that would be handled. Thank you. My name is Nancy Morgan, and I'm a resident here in McCormick Woods. I have the same safety concerns as this gentleman back here, plus some more. Um, I would like to point out that around McCormick Woods we have lots of hidden curves, hills, and the tendency is going to be for that golf cart to pull over into the pedestrian bicycle shoulder. We also have children in our neighborhood. They don't have children in the 55 and above neighborhoods in Arizona, and the streets are very wide and they have sidewalks. We do not have sidewalks except in the new part of the neighborhood in McCormick Woods. There's nowhere for our children to safely walk. So vehicles, golf carts, will be tempted to go into that shoulder side road along the side. And I think that's an extreme danger for our children and our pedestrians in McCormick Woods. Others wishing to share? Back here. <clears throat> I, Chris Brown, Club on Troon. Um, you know, not everybody here is 70. Some people are in their 60s. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, it's possible people are going to be souping these things up to the maximum 25 miles an hour, and, and we're going to we're going to be cruising on Saturday nights with them, and we're going to be we're going to be firing up the the, the drag races down McCormick. It's it's friggin' golf carts, you know. I mean, people, it's, it's it's not it's just not a big deal. I mean, I, I never take a golf cart anywhere, so I don't really care myself. But sure, why not? That's my feeling, and I think. People here are pretty responsible. I mean, I know you're, I am out walking my dogs every day down the shoulder, and cars go by at 50 or 60 miles an hour. By the way, at least you perfect. Go up to Truman Street, <laughs> <laughs> and you put, you put a patrol person there, and you only ticket people who are going 15 plus, 
and you will solve the national debt in a week and a half. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, anyway, so, anyway, golf carts, not an issue in my mind. Thank you. Let's, keep, let's try to keep our comments to golf carts, and uh, we'll talk about other stuff afterwards. So. I'm gonna, I got a couple over here first. I'll come back to you, sir. Doris Mancini. Um, could you define a public roadway for me? Well, I'd have to really look at how the RCWs address how that's worded. I wouldn't want to be quoted on that, but um, you have two parts of the roadway. You have the shoulder over the fog line, plus you have the regular traffic lanes. Well, we have private drives. Yes. So does that mean that um, we, to get on yeah. we have private drives, so does that mean that golf courts are going to be allowed on our private drives as well? No. No. Um, any private area wouldn't be included, and uh, obviously if somebody drove the golf cart up onto your property, you feel free to call the police and we'd come out and handle it. And there could I'm be about the street she's, she, which, which, actual streets. Yeah. So we have some, actually, I think that's something we need to uh, address with the homeowners association because we have private no, public I know. streets, we have private streets out there, and then we have private driveways. Right. So that's something we didn't capture. That's, that's a very good point. And uh, those are actually owned by the homeowners association. Are the private streets included in the golf course? They are. Okay. Yes, they are currently. Yes. So we have that. What's, what's a private drive? What, what do you so um, where your Mercury such a private? Yes. Yeah. We are going to include Mercury. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We have someone from Mercury that lives on a private street. So I think that's an additional area we need to uh, concern, or very concerned. I'm Judy Rose. I think the issue is on the private streets, the private roads, we do not have the stride for, for the pedestrian walkway. So if the golf carts are on the right hand side of the road, they are indeed. <coughs> Near the shoulder, if not on the We brought up a very good point that we didn't capture, so that's something we'll need to discuss with the homeowners association and how all of you would like to, to handle that. I'm, I'm, I'm uncertain because those are your private streets. So. But I feel like on those streets we drive so slow. Oh, sorry. I feel like on those streets we drive so slow, anyways, at least we do. Um, and then the, the carts would just be following where the cars are going. We'd be on our right hand side of the road where the cars are going. We wouldn't be on the shoulder driving the carts. Mm -hmm. uh, Wayne Cohen, and uh, obviously I'm a proponent of uh, having the private golf carts, and I feel it would be a benefit. Uh, to slow down the speeders. When I walk my dogs twice a day, seven days a week, and I can tell you how many times I've seen cars try to get away on the access road where I'm walking my dogs, and it scares the, dead, the living daylights out of me. Um, I think it would have golf carts on a regular basis uh, going down the regular roads that the streets are would actually slow down the traffic and make it safer. Yeah. Greg Bogus, I live in uh, Prestwick. Uh, I, I, before we moved up here, I lived down in California at a, a place called Rancho Marietta. A golf course community, very simple to this, uh, quite a bit larger, I'd say at least twice, maybe three times as large. And they had golf carts there. Uh, I would say there was probably 800 to 1,000 golf carts in this community. Uh, and I cannot remember the four years that I lived there that there was any problem. They drove on all the streets. Uh, pretty much people were going everywhere in the neighborhoods. Uh, they go by golf cart, not by car, which to me is actually safer. Um, the question that I would have is, is where is the commercial area going to be? And I assume that that's going to be outside of the McCormick Woods area that we're talking about now. Yeah, and and uh, 
the, that community had gotten the dispensation, they had a, a highway, a state highway that would buy their place with stoplights. And they got uh, that you could cross that intersection and go into the commercial area. So everybody was uh, uh, driving their golf carts to get their groceries, go to restaurants, or whatever. Uh, I would suggest that you make it mandatory that they have uh, lights and blinkers and all the accoutrements that, are, uh, that they, these carts come with. Uh, I don't think you need to say, gee, you don't, you, the sun now, the sun set. These things are built where they've got all that stuff on at one point. And, uh, and the other thing I think you need to look ahead and say to you is, uh, you know, if we need to go to the commercial area, and it's economic, or ecologically uh, efficient not to use your gasoline engines and cars and stuff uh, to go like that. So uh, that's what I would say. I can't remember that there was ever any problem with the golf carts. They had extensive facilities there. They had an amphitheater where they hold concerts. You can see 300 golf carts. Everybody went to golf carts. So very, very safe would be my time. Okay, so I can currently, so there is a commercial component that's next to the park, and it would, there are improvements planned to Old Clifton Road, and it, whether or not, because I mean, the zone has to be, the speed limit is 25 miles an hour or less. It's 35, if not 40 out there now, and it's 45 in a section of it. So and it's 45 from Anderson Hill to, to the last year. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to take, you know, different, you know, the street's going to look different than it does today for that, for so that to happen. Make a good point, we need golf carts that can go 45. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> there are, Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, weren't you? The path we're taking here, we could choose to, to, to require these to be licensed or have a decal on it. When we start talking about that administratively, it would cost us more to administer that than any revenue we would get. So, and I believe you can buy golf carts that you can license and have lights on them, and you can drive them on, and they're capable of driving higher speeds. Public roads, yeah. yeah. Those are not what we're proposing here. These are similar to what you would rent here, and I believe they're, you know, I think they were allowed at one time, they've been since, they, they were later banned, uh, and it was a golf course's decision, and they're, I think, What's the, max, uh, and, and the maximum are what, 15 miles an hour, those I, things, I, going down the hill maybe? 18 miles an hour is what they, what your standard, what they come stock. 18 miles an hour, they go They can be, hour, they can be adjusted. Okay, and Mr. Davis, I think you were next. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dick Davis. I live here in McCormick Woods. And it's been my experience that government reacts to uh, citizens carrying torches and pitchforks. What is the compelling, who, where does the compelling reason come from for doing this? I, I haven't seen any pitchforks or, or, or torches in this community, so what's going on here? Why are we looking at this issue, and who is uh, who's really pushing this issue? I, can, I think why we're here tonight is to prevent uh, pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, the golf course came to us and said we'd like to consider this, uh, and you would like the city to consider this. And I said, why not? Uh, and uh, so we've done a little bit of work on it. We have a draft ordinance been pointed out here we have um, a deficiency because we have some private roads that we haven't considered but uh, this is tonight is really about us getting some feedback from the community so that if we were to try to act on this that we don't have uh, you know people with pitchforks down at City Hall uh, you know <coughs> asking for our heads so let me put this gentleman and I'll come back over here okay. <coughs> Jump first and worst, and I think it's a great idea. I think it will slow people down driving through our area. And as far as private roads, I can't see people just going out driving out private roads in their car. They're going to you know, just go from the golf course to their house. All right, thank you. And that was 
<coughs> gentlemen, I'll come back to you. Uh, Ed Kosky, Voltaire, please. Uh, the follow up on Dick's statement. What's the real reason? If the golf course says they want to build a sense of community, we have that already. And I'm not sure that golf carts are going to build a bigger sense of community. Uh, so I really would like to know why the golf course is behind it. And second, um, I'm concerned with safety. If they go 18 or 15 miles an hour on the roadway, fine, but it's the hills and the curves and the cars that go 35 behind it. So I think we're opening up a can of worms. And I just assume not have the golf carts on the road. Mr. Knowles here, I think, would like to address that comment. Hi, uh, Mark Knowles. I represent Columbia Hospitality Manage Management Group of McCormick Woods Golf Course. So it's been, you know, if you look at the history of McCormick Woods uh, in the community, we've had ongoing uh, feedback from the golfing community and uh, specifically uh, there weren't some homeowners in that also that have asked us, you know, why can't we own our own golf cart? Right? I mean, I'm, I play golf here, why can't I own my own golf cart? And so, that is, that is part of it. You, you've got a portion of the community that would uh, make their lifestyle much more enjoyable to just be able to pull out their garage and their golf cart, come down with their golf, and, and drive home with their golf cart. So, you know, economically, we look at it and don't see a, a negative impact to our our business, and so we, we brought it to the city. So that that, that is, there's no, you know, big dark cloud somewhere. That, that's we're just trying to respond to the members of the community. Thank you. Your first. Um, I'm just. You just get to hear you. Oh, Judy Burns. <coughs> Again. <Yeah. laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I would just like to point out that. This is something the golf course has asked for, and the residents, it looks like the residents are going to have to live with it because the golf course asked for it. Do we get a chance as residents to vote on whether we want golf carts in our community, or will this just happen because they asked for it? I think that's why we're here tonight, is to get feedback from the community. I think there's gonna be we need to see another step in this process, in particular, if we want to include these private roads. So I'm going to go to this gentleman here, and then I'll come back to you, Mr. Kennedy. I'm Rob Olbus. I live on Crestwick. So is it my understanding that um, Columbia Hospitality is going to allow private carts on the golf course? Uh, now, depending on how this goes, <clears throat> if that's an eventuality, correct. All right. If that were the case, I'd be in favor. What would the trail fee be? There would be a fee. Uh, sure, sure. Absolutely. Just like there would be the renter. Uh, Ken Campich, um, resident, and I actually approached the golf course with the thought of, hey, could you, would you allow golf carts on your golf course? So I, I would couch it in terms of the, the golf course is actually neutral. Um, it was kind of like, oh, okay. Um, it, it's not a, my perception, it's not it's a not push. A it's not a push from the golf cart or the golf course that they want this to happen. They were okay with it. And it, 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 it might be a push, right, economically for the, you, you lose some trail fees, but maybe you, but, so they're not pushing for it. I think they're willing to allow for it for the benefit of the community. That, that would be the way I would put it. I agree with that. My name's Dick Peterson. I live on uh, Wexford Avenue on the fifth hole. Uh, we have a winter place, my wife and I do, down in Sun City, Arizona, where their golf carts are licensed by the state. They're allowed to drive on any public street with a speed limit less than, I believe, 30 miles an hour. Uh, cart dealers in the state are not allowed to sell a cart with a, uh, that will achieve a speed greater than 25 miles an hour. <clears throat> they do not, however, prohibit cart users 
from having them re-geared, you know, many of them will go 30 to 35 miles an hour. In the seven years we've been going down there, there have been at least six fatalities with uh, golf carts. And the golf cart never wins. It's always the automobile or whatever the other vehicle is. That being said, in Sun City, where we have about 40,000 residents, and it's a much larger geographic area, golf carts, I own one, uh, are used as a second vehicle. We can get to all the rec centers, libraries, supermarkets, uh, commercial uh, activities of all sorts, fast food places, restaurants, and all of that within the confines of, of Sun City. We're allowed by state law to cross busier, faster speed limit streets at a stoplight. Bell Road is one notorious example if you're familiar with Phoenix. Uh, but you're not allowed to drive on it. So if that were the similar logic to be applied here with a future commercial area out off of Old Clifton, you'd have a problem because you'd have to go down Old Clifton a ways and it's 45 miles an hour or create some sort of a, a, another path for a golf cart in order to get to a future commercial area. I guess my point is that, that if, if you've ever followed anybody coming into our development who goes the 25 mile an hour speed limit, I'd like to meet you because I've never seen anybody do that. <laughs> So if you're out in a golf cart going 15 miles an hour, you're going to have your backside run up on by, by automobiles. And if that should happen, the golf cart's going to lose. And, and talking about something in the future, this, this is not, we're not proposing at all that we would be able to access it. And that access gold cliff, it stops well short of it. And if that was to happen, was to happen, you would need some sort of a trail amenity to get there, whether it's a tunnel or the road gets built differently. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, it isn't at all proposed that you don't want to mix. We don't want to mix 45 and 15. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes. Dick Ziegler, a resident. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to thank the mayor, uh, the council, Chief Martai for coming out and uh, conducting this meeting. One of the things when we chose to annex into the city uh, and get out of the county um, was an opportunity to have a greater say in our own government. And I think this is a pretty good example of that in action. So I really appreciate it. I'm sure that in other words, whether you support this or, or don't support it, I think you um, appreciate the opportunity to be heard. So thank you very much. Um, I do have uh, two comments, um, both really just following up on what's already been said. Um, one is with regard to the equipment requirements, and I noticed that you state RCWs, but I'm, I'm curious why you don't require stoplights and turn signals. Um, I, um, I think those would be pretty valuable if they're to operate on city streets, and I also um, think it would be beneficial to define um, city streets better to exclude the um, walking in the wider portion of, of the area that is very clear that that is not allowed to drive on there because uh, pedestrians and golf carts just would really not mix very well. Thank you. I think it's a good point. Mine was the same question. And I think Brandy captures that. I saw her writing feverishly over there. Um, well, we got to. Mr. Davis, you got it once already. I'm typically a break on the fourth hole. Um, I bought an apartment that was about a year and a half ago. I'm the new apartment. This is the best one fourth hole. I'm the fourth new apartment. And I can tell you, looking forward to what I would think would be my community when I retire, which is 15 years or so from now. I bought here, but the one the one drawback for me was you could not have a golf cart. If it had been a golf cart from here, I would have paid more for my property. Because that's the lifestyle I'm looking for. Thanks for your comment. Others that haven't commented, then I'll go back so, for a second bite to Mr. Davis. <laughs> All right. Uh, just one more observation. I'm Dick Davis, you know that. I drove you over. 
<laughs> and I'm not driving you home. <laughs> they, keep in mind one thing when we talk about 25 mile an hour speed limits in here. We have different kinds of roads. We have side roads like I live on. We have other kinds of roads called McCormick Woods Drive. McCormick Woods Drive is driven by many, many people who aren't residents here. And most of them have shoes with lead in them. And they drive up and down McCormick Woods Drive. And sometimes I'll hear this kind of stuff and I'm wondering, who in the hell's going over the next cliff and into the next tree here, like we had about five or six years ago. So that's an issue for me. You've got golf carts puttering along and you've got a guy with a, uh, some plumber with a truck loaded with stuff going 50 miles an hour down McCormick Woods Drive. That's a dangerous thing. And let's keep that in mind when you, when you think about doing this. Thank you. We'll get you back over here. I mean, I hear, I hear the safety concerns from the people who are worried that their dog or child is going to get run over by a golf cart, and I, I'm sympathetic to that. But the other concerns seem to be for the people in the golf carts, you know, that, oh, they're going to be in great jeopardy. That uh, If you're concerned about the jeopardy you're going to be in being in a golf cart, you're, you don't have to get a golf cart. You're, you know, if you're worried about the plumber truck running you over, then don't get a golf cart. It's, 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 it's not mandatory, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, I, for, for those of us who aren't concerned, I guess we take a risk that maybe we haven't thought of, but uh, I, now that it's been brought to my attention, I still not. Anyway, sorry, back and forth. Chris Brown. All right, anybody else? Hey, Mayor, I got one thing. Okay, you got one thing? Just and, one and thing. I, I, we have picked up a couple of good thoughts here that we hadn't considered, so that we need to consider. I knew coming into this that I was going to hear about the speeders in McCormick Woods because I hear about it all the time. <laughs> but where I don't hear it is I don't get emails at work. Every once in a while from the homeowners association I'll get a notice about different things. Some very rarely about speeders. I, I really don't get a lot. I, I get it when I come out in the community and people are here and there's yeah they're speeding all the time and I believe it. I understand that. Um, we do have, and I, I don't want to complain, we do have manpower constraints. I mean, without a doubt, we're really short right now for several reasons, but we're trying to fix that. But if you email the police mailbox that goes to me and it goes to Cindy Cercelli, who's the office manager, and those are routed directly to the supervisors and we do traffic projects. So the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Now, it's gonna get some grease after I've listened to this because, and I would warn you all not to speed. <laughs> Don't come complain about the ticket you got. Because believe it or not, I do hear from the other side, you know, when we do some law enforcement out here, there are people on the other side that think we should be doing something else. So if you, if you have a, a particular person that's a problem, you need to let us know. Let us know who it is and we'll make sure we take care of it. If it's just in general, a general area, let us know. Write the police mailbox, say this is a constant problem. We'd appreciate some law enforcement out here. And we'll come out and do it and we'll get back to you because that's what we do. So we can help. I, I'm not saying we can solve the problem, but we can help. And the same thing goes, like I said, coming into this, I'm not a proponent or an opponent of the golf cart thing. I'm just looking at it realistically and seeing if I thought this was going to be a huge problem for the police department, I would lobby against it with the mayor privately. Um, I haven't done that because I think that we could respond reasonably and efficiently to any type of complaints that come in and I don't think it's going to overwhelm us. Uh, this is, like somebody mentioned, this isn't Sun City or Sun City West or and I'm familiar with Sun City West. Um, those are huge community, communities, and I've driven golf cart in Sun City West, and you're out there in major traffic, and um, it's not major traffic here. Now, there may be some traffic issues here, but I'm willing to address those. Let me know about them. 
Um, I'm willing to enforce whatever ordinance goes in and do dil do di due diligence, excuse me, um, in making sure that we fulfill our obligation. And I wouldn't be here saying that unless I really believed we could do it. So that's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Peters. Just one more. All right. Problems. Remember, you're walking home. You're right. <laughs> Depends on what you say. Peters again. Uh, are we going to have both gas and electric golf carts? Is that is that, or has that not yet been determined? It's, it's not yet been determined. I think the but ordinance would allow either. I, I would like to lobby for electric okay. because one of the things that I particularly well, number one, I, I work at Gold Mountain with gas carts and they're noisy, but they're necessary out there because of the hills and the fact that you want to get more than one round without having to charge them. For however long. I own an electric down in, in uh, Sun City, and I really enjoy the fact that the carts here are electric. They're quiet, they don't create pollution. If you're gonna use the argument that this is an environmentally uh, responsible thing to do, I think electric would be the way to go. And it would certainly be less noise uh, on, on for the residents than having a bunch of gas carts out there. That's my two cents. Al Rose, resident. And the one thing I haven't heard is what about parking the golf cart? Uh, I think that that should be uh, taken into, into consideration because uh, there are uh, obviously people here with a two car garage that would like to have a golf cart. What do we do? Yeah, I'll call you in the morning. We're going to do business together. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to add on to your house. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think you have some pretty strict covenants out here, and I think that would be addressed to the homeowners association and not through this ordinance. But I think uh, Mr. Peterson brought up a good point about the electric aspect of it. So I've got three points I think for sure that we've missed in this as we continue our deliberations: the electric aspect and driving on the shoulders so that the chief has good tools to talk to somebody about and educate them not to do that. And then the private streets, which we, we need to have some discussion with the homeowners association with. Oh, please, please add the um, rear tail brake lights. Whether or not we, yeah, lights on them. Okay. Was the things I, I captured tonight. Yes, yes, Mr. Knowles. Yeah, just for general information on golf carts, that is, that is not a huge expensive upgrade to a golf cart to put lights. Put about lights on them? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, if you're going to spend four or $5,000 on a golf cart, it might be an extra four or 500 bucks or even less than that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Let's see. Is it good? Okay. Yes. Mark, do you have any idea how many golf carts you would anticipate? initially um, roaming the McCormick Woods? You know, we thought probably if this passed in the first year, it might be 10 or 12, you know, people in the community. But I could see it as one person mentioned uh, that they're looking for that as something in the community. Um, so maybe someday, maybe there's 50 golf cars or something, but I would say in the immediate, probably 10 to 20 would be a rough guess. How many people in here right now have golf carts? I don't think uh, anybody no has because you can't use them. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, I, would, I would have to say my husband was walking along, coming up McCormick Woods Drive, where the hill is, towards the entrance, and this gentleman was on the left-hand side in the pedestrian widened zone, going on the left-hand side of the road down the street. So I object that he <laughs> Well, it, it, it sounds like there might need to be some education performed there if, the, if this becomes a reality. Yeah. <laughs> so.
Other questions here this evening? Well, I, just, I appreciate everybody coming out. This is a, this is a great turnout, and uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to, to come out here and chat with you guys uh, out here in the community. So. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I guess, I guess I should open this up to the city council. What, what questions do you have or comments? I have a question. I'm wondering, do you think that this is something, this is another can of worms, that should go to a vote? Yes. yes. To your homeowners vote. association? A vote within McCormick Woods? Sure. Is that something you think that would be useful to get a better there's, idea? There's only one vote. Yeah. And that's the, the owners of home, homeowners association, which is the developer. I, I see. The, the vote is over. Yeah. Well, you can do an advisory vote uh, yeah. uh, of the residents via email if you want uh, we, a, and better, a bigger sample. What, and one of the things that we did here recently when we did the code serve, we did, we, we've got a web page and we did a survey. Um, so that's an, a, a very inexpensive tool to. How would to, you limit it to just McCormick residents? Because would you want people to live? you know, way outside the development to be voting. We would hope yeah. there's some integrity, you know, and well, it, I, I, mean, I mean, if it's... Hope is not a reliable... We, when, when we did, when we did, uh, <laughs> when we did the Code City, we were able to, you know, capture IP addresses so that, well, I believe we did, we were able to identify people, so we knew, we knew that you voted four times, and we were okay with it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, I, you know, it's just I, it, it's dollars and cents to, to start put something on the ballot. It's twenty thousand dollars, and if you well, you, you know, and an advisory you do it for the charity. Yeah. Our association has probably the majority of our. And, and I, I, we're going to have to talk to them anyway about the street issue and, and get some feedback. I I know I think one of your board members is here actually, so not to put him on the spot, but well, you know, there's. There's more. We need to do some more homework on this. There, there's been some great points brought up this evening, and you know whether it's a community survey and whether that turns into some sort of a vote. You know, we'll more to come. Do we so. have, how are we going to communicate? I'm just wondering how the city's going to communicate with these folks in the future. Is it a situation where Brandy can capture email addresses or somehow get them on a mailing list? So how would you like to communicate? Would, would, would it be the most efficient? All of you, I would assume, communicate with the Homeowners Association and they push information out to you that versus get, trying to get more email from us. So I think the best way for us to communicate is back through the Homeowners Association, your association. That's how we found out about this meeting. Yes. We, we did put it on the city's webpage too, but I, I imagine they communicated with you too. So I think that's the best way we'll push information to the Homeowners Association because we're going to be talking to them. Others from the council or audience? I would just want to thank everybody for coming out. This is more people than we generally get at a council meeting. So I think we should move our council meetings out here. We're a lot nicer too. So thank you very much. I appreciate you coming out tonight.